Good morning. Here we are. It's another Wednesday. <laughs> and I'm back to do a little bit of stamping and playing around with you here at my craft desk this morning. So I hope you can join me. Um, it's been a it's been a good week. It's been a busy week. We're in 2 July now. So um, there's a few things going on that I'll tell you about. Uh, what's coming up. And uh, it's a good way to... Um, to find out about what's happening with Stampin' Up! right now. Anytime you want to check in with me on a Wednesday morning, I'm usually here around 11. I'm a little late today, um, but usually around this time you'll find me stamping at my craft desk. Uh, next Wednesday I won't be here because I'm doing a, um, a class up in the Hunter Valley. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. should have grabbed a glass of water before I started. Um, <clears throat> But, um, but that's okay, um, I will uh, find another time and announce that here on the page for you. So, good morning everyone, I can see there's a few people here. Please pop on and say hi when you come. Um, be great to see you here. And say hello. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to put the phone in the holder pretty quickly. Good morning Fiona. Although it's not morning in New Zealand, is it? It's, it's already afternoon. <laughs> it's late morning here, so... Um, <clears throat> you can probably hear my cookie boy, he's up there, see, there he is up, up in the cage, up there, that's where he sits while I craft, and he calls out to me, he does come down sometimes for a play, I take him out and give him a cuddle, but, um, but he usually is quite happy to sit up there and sing or make noises. All right, <clears throat> so we're into the second month of our new annual catalogue, and there's lots going on in the Stampin' Up! world right now. Um, it's July, so we have our bonus days promotion, and what that is, it's um, during July, if you spend, for every $90 order you place, so if you place um, an order that's over $90, you get a voucher, if you have an order that's over $190, you get two vouchers and so on, um, so for every $90 order you place, you get a voucher for $9. So basically it's a 10% a saving, um, but you get to spend those vouchers in August. So that's kind of cool because we have a new catalog out in August. Yes, I did say new catalog. I know we just had one last month. That was the annual catalog, but we have our holiday catalog coming out in August. Um, I can show you the cover if you like. I'll grab it for you if anyone's interested to see it, but you may have already seen it. It's starting to appear on social media in various places. Um, they should be going out to customers. Um, I use the mailing selector, which is the Stampin' Up! Um, way of getting them out to customers. Um, I go through and I tick everybody that should get one. Um, and uh, as long as it's somebody who has shopped with me, I usually go through all my online orderers, I go through um, my regular class comers, all those kinds of people, or people who've just told me that they want one, and I tick the boxes and stamp it up, mail them out. Now, they haven't gone out yet. I haven't heard of anyone receiving them, but it should be soon. So um, I really should put myself on the list as well, so I know when they, if they start to arrive. But I actually depend on you guys to tell me when they're arriving. So, um, <clears throat> So that's exciting. That's next month we have that coming out for customers. Demonstrators could actually pre-order right now. So if you are a demonstrator or if you were thinking of being a demonstrator when you join, you can even put, because it's pre-order period for demonstrators, you can even use the, um, the kit to get new product from the new catalog in your kit. So that's really cool. Um, so if anyone's interested in doing that, please just uh, let me know. Um, and on that note, I think I'll get started. So just remember your bonus days vouchers. This is really important, actually. They will email them to you. So if you put an order through, make sure you have your email address registered either for online orders or make sure I have your email address if you're putting the order directly through me. Um, the reason being that they send you the coupons. Now, the coupons are a number that you then need to enter when you place your order in August to get your $9 off. So... Um, or $18 or however many vouchers you have um, but if you lose them they're lost okay it's like cash really so when you get the email from Stampin Up straight after you place your order to say here's your voucher put the, put it somewhere safe or print it out or um, make a, keep a record of it somehow so that when you're putting your orders through in August you can actually use them because if you lose them I can't retrieve them for you so, um, so make sure you hang on to them Okay, it's a little bit like, um, reminds me of, I used to have a real problem going into car parks, you know, you get the little ticket out and the, the boom gate goes up, and I used to, for many, many years, re 
always find a way to lose that ticket. <laughs> and I'd be in the car frantically going through my bag trying to find it. I now have a place I always put them every single time I go through a boom gate. It's a little bit, the vouchers are a bit like that. You need to remember where you put them so that you can use them next month. Anyone else do that? Hi Donna, how are you? Welcome from Ohio. When I first met my husband, that's where he was living, in Ohio. He does. He's from Michigan though. Actually, that's home for him. Okay, so I'm going to put the phone in the holder and we'll get crafting. We'll do a little bit of stuff. Um, that's exciting about the new holiday catalogue coming out, hey? Um, I actually love, I think the Christmas catalogue is my favourite catalogue of the year. I really, really love the Christmas catalogue. Um, I'm just putting my phone into the correct, the holder into the right position. So I'm going to flip the phone around. Here we go. All right. Can everyone see that? Okay, there's my desk. Ta-da! All right, got my grid paper ready to go. I always use grid paper. If you don't have grid paper, um, that's something you definitely want to grab hold of. I'm going to be using my trimmer today because I wanted to show you something that a couple of people have asked me for recently and I haven't had time to do a standalone video for it so I thought I'll make it part of my live video this morning. A couple of people have asked me about the right measurements for um, for cards. Now I'm in Australia so we use metric but in the US of course you use inches so I'm going to give you both and, um, and we'll see how we go with that. Um, so I'm going to start with a piece of Whisper White Thick. So here's some card making basics for you. I very often use thicker cardstock, as thick as I can use for my card base. That way um, I know that my card will be nice and stable, not flimsy, um, and you, I think it gives you a better result. It's just a little bit more sturdy. Um, we have the regular cardstock in all the different colours is a reasonable thickness. So for example, if I was using Pool Party as my card base, obviously this is not a card base size, then I would, um, I would think that that's fine. But our Whisper White, the normal Whisper White, which is um, the one that comes in a pack of 40 sheets, that is traditionally a thinner feel of paper. Now it's actually, I believe, the same GSM. However, uh, not as the thick, but as the regular cardstock. Um, but the um, the reason that it feels, it's been super compressed, so it's perfect for stamping on. So your Whisper White cardstock is the best. I've got some Whisper White thick here. Let me just grab some Whisper White of the normal. So this is my normal Whisper White, and it is, you can't see this in a video, of course, but this is very, very smooth, perfect for stamping on. In my opinion, it's the best um, stamping cardstock we have. And like I said, it comes in a pack of 40 sheets. So you actually get, it's $17, I believe, for 40 sheets, which I will double check that for you. But, um, but the cool thing about that is that you get a lot more out of it. However, I don't use it for card bases. What I use for card bases is my Whisper White thick cardstock which is considerably thicker than this. You'll notice just the way it, even, you know, if you just sound like <laughs> Rolf Harris, not that I should mention that, but um, he remember he used to do the wobble board all those years ago? Well, for anyone who does remember that, this thick Whisper White cardstock, you could actually do that because it's really thick. Um, whereas the thinner stuff, grab a piece of that, that does not wobble in the same way at all. You can really feel it's a lot thinner. So the thin stuff is great for stamping, but the thicker stuff is great for card bases. Okay, so I just pers that's a personal preference, but I think if any most people who I've um, worked with agree that the, the thicker stuff is definitely better for card bases. A couple of people told me they weren't happy with the way the Whisper White thicker paper scored or folded in particular. Um, to fold in half. When it first came out, it didn't fold as well. They've improved it and it folds quite nicely now. So um, so that's something else. If you gave it a try and you didn't like the way it folded, give it another go because they have actually improved it. All right. So I have got here one piece of thick Whisper White paper. And to cut this into card size, I'm going to be cutting it in Australia our cardstock is 29.7 by 21 centimeters wide. I'll go through the inches as well for you. Um, but in Australia, the halfway point is at 14.8. And so if I put this in at my 14.8 mark in my trimmer, bring my 
um, bring my ruler down and just straight up and down and that's one piece of Whisper White Thick cardstock cut exactly in half okay so at the 14.8 mark so when you fold it in half remember we said it was 21 centimeters wide when you fold that in half which I'm just gonna do I always have my bone folder handy so I can go over the edges um, and that makes it nice sit nice and flat so it's 21 centimeters wide which means when I fold it in half it's 10 and a half centimeters wide so that's kind of the measurement that I base on. We're still 14.8 this way, but we're now 10 and a half wide this way. And so for me to put a card base on top of that, this one here that has a perfect little bit of a border all the way around, this piece is 10 centimeters wide. So I'm not much of a maths person, but basically for however wide your girl card front is, you're going to go half a centimeter smaller on each side with each measurement that you do. So this one's 10, this is 10 and a half. If I wanted to put another piece inside of that, for example, if I was going to use this piece, okay, this is nine and a half. I've gone down another half a centimeter. So by going down in half centimeter increments, I can have that beautiful little border all the way around my work. Okay, so that, this piece is nine and a half by 13.8, this piece is 10 by 14.3 which is half a centimeter smaller than the 14.8 okay so that's kind of how I do it I always just go down in half centimeter increments if you are working with inches and I'm sorry if I'm boring anybody with all of this I promise to just make something in a minute um, standard size of cards in America is five and a half inches by eight and a half inches and this works the same way the same way I go down a quarter of an inch with each layer so this one is four by five and a quarter this one is three and three quarters by five and each one fits inside and I just made up some little templates so that I always have those handy if I need to do something in US sizes I've got them there and I'll just clip them together and keep them handy so um, if anyone wants me to write those measurements again in the comments I can do that but I just I have been asked a couple of times recently by people to do a video about sizes those are the basic sizes and those both fit in a C6 size envelope okay which of course we sell those as well um, if you haven't tried our envelopes seriously they come in a pack of 40 they are the nicest envelopes I have ever used they are smooth and really really lovely and like I said you get 40 in a pack so they last a good long while um, I highly recommend them they're really great so there you go that's a little bit about card measuring basics I may do if people think it's useful I will do an actual um, YouTube video I probably I usually put my Facebook lives up on YouTube anyway but um, I may do a special video just about that because it seems it's something a lot of people want to know okay so I'm going to move all this white cardstock out of the way and I'm going to do a couple of things today I'm going to start with just a simple little card I've been playing around here and you can see I've half put this card together so I'm actually going to put the rest I'm going to do a whole a whole piece and we'll just get started and do that little card okay so I'm starting with a piece of bumblebee this is a new color this bumblebee um, well let's let's actually start with a piece of white cardstock <laughs> All right, so this is the piece I just cut a moment ago. Remember, that was 21 centimeters wide and 14.8 when I cut it down. Okay, I'm gonna fold that in half. I'm gonna use my bone folder, make it sit flat, and we've got our basic card front. Now this little guy here, I'm going to cut this one down. Does anyone remember the, the amount that I said before? We always have it. A card front for me is always 10 centimeters wide and basically because I'm using this um, measurement all the time it's become a habit I just know how much to cut it down I don't have to sit there and think about it it's just always perfect and you'll find if you're making a lot of cards you have a basic measurement that you'll always work with all right I've got some paper here this is from the um, flowers for every 
season every let me have a little look it's right at the very front of your catalog and this is actually my favorite paper from it it's these beautiful roses so it's the bumblebee paper and it's on that um, beautiful background so it's on page uh, 10 actually and we're talking about the flowers for every season sweet collection um, there are memories and more cards there are ribbons there's all sorts of things that these they just look absolutely beautiful but the, I'm actually talking about the flowers for every season six by six designer series paper okay so lots and lots of you can see they've put them here beautiful colors these are actually our in colors this is the whole collection all five in colors are in this paper plus white so um, there are a couple I think because there's a very light pink in there as well so let's have a look and see. I think there are other colours. If ever you want to have a look, if you go to page 150, I believe it is. Yep. Or 148, actually, the page before. It tells you here what's in it. So it's got the five in colours, then Poppy Parade and Whisper White. But there is also a couple of other colours that's sort of sneaky in there as well because there's a very... there's. Um, a very light pink now this may just be the magenta madness watered down perhaps maybe that's why they haven't listed it as a separate color but you could coordinate that with your lighter pinks like um, blushing bride um, I don't think you could really get petal pink with that because it's a petal pink is a little bit on its way to apricot but um, but some of these other colors you'll definitely see do match in. The Misty Moonlight for example is like a toned down version of Night of Navy. It's really similar. So, so today we're using the Bumblebee and I'm actually also going to use another product that some of you may have seen me starting to use and that is our new snail. And Sorry, seal! Not snail! Okay, let's forget about snail. It's gone. Now we have seal and we've got normal seal and we've got seal plus. Okay, two different, totally different adhesives. They operate in a different way as well, even though the, the casing is a, a very similar shape. But you'll notice that the Seal Plus is a darker blue, so you can easily identify which one it is when you have it sitting on your desk. And then the lighter blue is the Stampin' Seal. Now, I've actually been really enjoying these. I wasn't sure if I really enjoyed them when I first got them, but it's because I was trying to use them like snail. And therefore, I was using too much pressure and I was also um, not doing a couple of things that just make them easier to use. So here's a little lesson for you. I'm going to pop this over and I'm going to use my um, stamp and seal on the back. Now the seal plus, to be honest, is a little easier to use. It comes out in segments. There's no having to worry about um, a trail that you may leave after. The first thing you need to do with seal is you need to make sure the end is actually sticky, and it is. Okay, I can see there's stick there. I've just advanced it with my finger a little bit, and then you run it very, very lightly over. Okay, so if you need to do it a couple of times and then lift it and take it off. So this is how I've been getting the best results from mine. Down, lift, and sometimes you need to advance it with your finger. Okay, and the reason you need to do that is because if I didn't lift it uh, while it was still attached completely to the paper, then I can end up removing the end of the bit of stick from the end of the roll. So there's no sticky there waiting to go. Okay, so this piece here is going to go in here. Now I saw a really good tip this morning that I haven't used yet, but I thought, well, that's a good idea. Um, you do have the option of advancing it with your finger each time if you don't feel that the, the sticky, like if it doesn't come out immediately, advance it with your finger and then it should go down. You go down with it nice and low and then lift it at the end. However, if you have a silicon mat, if you run it on the silicon mat, each time you won't need to advance it with your finger because each time it's going to be right there. So just a tiny bit on the silicon mat and then use this. So I need to try that trick myself. I'm only telling you what I saw. Um, but I would, I would love to be able to, to experiment with that and tell you for certain that that is a great idea. But if someone wants to give it a try, that would be great. Okay, I'm using the Bumblebee ink pad. And I'm using a stamp from our lovely U stamp set. I just wanted to use this one. It's so pretty. And I'm going to just start by stamping right here. And I'm going to come around like a clock, kind of starting in the middle. And stamp and then st the second one is a lighter one it's like a stamp off 
All right, so I've just kind of done this section here. Don't worry about the fact that it looks like it's a bit of a mess in the middle. That's okay. <laughs> it's just that we're going to be using um, a circle and the circle's going to go over the top and I want the branches coming out from behind the circle. So this is the stamp set I was just talking about. This one, that's the stamp I've just used, this little leaf here. This is actually one of my favourite stamps from this set. I think it's really nice, but it's got some great words in it as well. We're also going to use the Just Because which is this one here. I like a good just because. Just because is such a great sentiment to use. Alright, going back to my white card stock again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, usually I recommend stamping before you punch. And the reason why is then you can line the punch up around your words. Although it doesn't matter as much these days. Now that we use clear blocks, it's pretty easy to see where you're going. But I just find it's usually easier to punch after you have stamped. There are exceptions to that. So I've got this lovely just because. I'm using soft suede ink, which is one of my favourite browns. And I'm going to come in with my punch and pop that so it's just in the middle there. And just looking to see what I've got. I'm actually thinking, because I can, I'm going to stamp this off and again. And I'm just going to have it just a really light little bit of a stamp behind there. I'm also going to come in with a bit of yellow, the bumblebee again, and I'm going to zip around the edge of my punch, of my punch shape. And then we're going to add a little bit of uh, some dimensionals. I've just realised I don't have many dimensionals. If you get down to the end of your dimensional sheet, I hope everyone knows that you can also use the edges. So you just grab your scissors. This will save you having to run out and buy new dimensionals immediately. It just means you've got some backup pieces on here. And I'm going to bring these in. a few of those because no one's going to see them anyway. Here we go. And see how nice it is just with those little bits and pieces coming out from behind there. There is also, I was thinking, we've also got these awesome, I love these, these are the gold laser cut pieces. How nice are they? And see that would be nice too with a circle in the middle of that, wouldn't it? But I thought I might use a couple of um, a couple of gold leaves from this. There's a whole bunch of them on there. Let's see. Yep, that would be nice. And I've got another one here. Um, I might use a glue dot to stick these on. You could use probably um, Tombow multi adhesive or glue dots. But because some of this is going to be disappearing behind here. that one and I've got another one here as well just that little bit of gold really adds to the project just lifts it I think the other color that I've been using quite a bit starting to use more and more we've got new foil which is brass foil now that's really nice it's, it's shinier than the gold and I'm going to use you can use um, Tombow um, which is great for this sort of thing and the good thing about Tombow is because it's a liquid you can actually when you go to stick it down onto the base you can move it into position and make sure it's right before you really have to commit yourself the seal plus on the other hand once it's down it's down so I'm just going to be really really careful so you take your lid off make sure that it's sticky on the end and then roll it out now this has more of a to be honest it feels a bit more like the old snail and I don't know if you can see this, but it, let's see if I can get it in the light. Can you see how it's like little segments? So it's a lot easier to um, snap off. It doesn't have any problems with, um, with a trail that the other seal does. So it's very easy to use. 
and then I'm just going to make sure I get this right because like I said I won't be able to reposition it once it's down Ooh, and I just didn't quite get that right that's better All right, and then we just got a simple cute little card in fact the one thing I think that's missing I might need some a bit of bling so let's get some of our gilded gems I love these guys if you haven't used them they are just fantastic three different sizes and I usually use all three see it just finishes it off isn't that cute all right so that's a simple little card that we've just done I'm going to do one more I'll put these inks away so I don't stick my elbows or fingers or something in them which is a one of my favorite tricks not all right so this time I'm kind of playing around a little bit I've only got a vague idea of what I'm doing I did have the pieces out a moment ago and I'm just going to bring them back in oh also that card would look really nice in this bumblebee envelope these memories and more envelopes and matching cards are really lovely um, I think I might use that for that one all right so I've got a piece in this is piece of wood grain paper and the sun has just come out and I hope it doesn't create too much shadows this piece of wood grain paper so this is my 10 centimeter wide by 14.3 um, piece of uh, early espresso and then of course this is half a centimeter smaller on each side so this one is nine and a half wide by 13.8 okay so I'm always just half a centimeter and I don't do maths I can tell you now maths is not my thing I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this straight down just remember too to go really light with the snail if you push too hard it doesn't like it and go slower than you might have gone with the snail um, so the seal does definitely like a slower a slower approach all habits that we're having to break because we're also used to doing it that way right now I've got a piece here let me see this is just a piece of whisper white I'm going to trim this off so it's the same size as my um, wood grain piece so that's going to be 13.8 and I've got another of my new favorite sets now this one is called nothing's better than okay now this is a fun set it's actually one of the million dollar sets which means it's been created by um, one of the girls when a demonstrator sells a million dollars in product um, they actually get to design, work with the design team at Stampin' Up! and design their own stamp set. And Connie Stewart has designed this one. It's super, super cute. These coffee cups look so retro. They're really, really lovely. I've done a couple of cards with them lately and I'm really liking them. Um, there's also a matching die set. So this one that says, uh, I love you better than, or says, love you more than. And then you've got chocolate, uh, cocktails, cookies and coffee. And then you've got your little cutouts that cut out those great little shapes so I'm not going to be cutting out any um, of the stamps today but I thought I would stamp um, with the coffee cup and I'm going to do this stamp in early espresso because it'll match in really nicely with the wood grain paper so I'm just going to pop this little retro cup so I saw somebody commented on a on a demonstrator site that they look like they came straight out of the Jetsons kitchen and I think they do so let's go with our early espresso ink now if ever you want I mean I can have these going off the page and that won't be a problem at all but what I find if you want them to be sort of centered not that it really matters if you start in the middle and work up and down or across left and right whichever way you decided to go you'll always have just going to that a little bit closer You'll always have them centered so you start with the middle one they're not perfectly aligned if I wanted them to be perfectly aligned and perfectly measured I would use my stamparatus for that now they're all sitting up and down <laughs> I've just had a thought hmm, that I might like them on an angle so let's try that
adds to the retro feel, I think. Having them on an angle. Okay. And I have got a bit of a rough edge there. So I'm actually going to just snip off that, that rough edge. Who uses their trimmer a lot? I do. I just love my trimmer. Very, very, very happy with this trimmer. The blades seem to be lasting a lot longer than the old ones did. Um, so that has made it a really good buy. There we go. That's a better edge now. So made a little less wide, but it's a little bit more. A less fluffy edge. Now if I start getting, there are some colours, black and the white, um, if I start getting fluffy edges on a regular basis that means it's time to change, change my blades and I think I might just about be there which is probably why that happened. Alright so now I've finished with that little stamp and I'm going to grab the solid coffee cup because that's going to colour that in. This is a two-step stamp set because a lot of these images work together. So I'm going to pop that on my block and bring in the colours that I'd like to use. And of course I'm going to use Bumblebee again because it's just a really great colour. This is a colour uh, color scheme I used um, yesterday on a different card. You might have seen I made a card that had the diagonal coffee cups on it and that was, yeah I posted that one yesterday. I'm going to stamp off because it's quite dark and I'm going to come in over here, I'm sorry about my head being in the picture, and I'm going to use my slightly lighter, because that was a really very dark coloured um, stamp to fill that in. And if it doesn't fill in perfectly, that's okay, it's sort of part of the retro look in my opinion. Now the other colours that I wanted to use were terracotta tile and misty moonlight. So these are all in colours I'm working with, but terracotta tile was one of our in colours from last year and um, Misty Moonlight and Bumblebee are this year's colours. So as I go, I'm going to kind of clean off that stamp. I'm just going to clean it off by stamping it a few more times because my stamp and mist isn't close and that's okay. Sometimes I do that, I can't be bothered cleaning it all off, so I just do it this way. So now I've got my blue coffee cup. Terracotta one. Stamp it off. Aren't these fun? It's a really cool little set. Very, very happy with this one. I've been using it for a couple of days and it's just, yeah, lots of fun. And if you want a darker one, you could do a darker one, shall we? Shall we do a darker one? So I didn't stamp off this time. Let's see if that's. It is quite a bit darker, but that still looks nice. It looks brighter when it's uh, been stamped off. But the bumblebee is the lightest of these colours, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'll go back to the blue, but I will stamp it off. So let me get rid of the. Yeah. And the last one. Isn't that cute? I love them. Alright, I close these up. Actually, I might need the espresso again, but we'll see. Yeah, I came this colour combo came to me when I was putting away my um, cardstocks and the three colours just happened to be sitting together and I thought, oh they look good. <laughs> really nice. Okay. So we've got this piece here. I've also got, this one's going to go down here. I like the wood grain background. Still got a bit of a rough edge there. I do have a little sanding block that I keep in my bag. We used to sell them years ago and sanding blocks have always been really good going, for going over a rough edge and just um, bringing it into line. So this is going to go on here like this. And then I've also got my, well I've made a mark on it but that's okay, I should be able to cover that up. So, I've got 
my poppy cut out here. So this has been cut out of champagne and it's um, it's the cup of the dies, the nothing's better than or love you more than dies. And I'm just getting blade of my scissors because I have a rough edge here too. Must be the day for it. Just gonna push out those bits. Need my take your pick tool, that's what I need. And here it is. Alright, that's all done. So I've got this bit here that says coffee. And then I've got this piece of paper here where I've started to cut out the love you more than. So here's the love you. Just got to take the bits out. So if, you if you've just joined us, um, I was uh, saying earlier that there's a deal this month called bonus days. And what that is, is when you um, spend $90 on any orders, you get a $9 voucher that you can then spend the following month and that's cool because we have a new catalogue coming out next month so that really does work very well so let's love you more than you could just have coffee love too if you didn't want to cut out all these bits my poor old big shot is uh, on its way out and doesn't always cut things as well as I would like actually making a horrible grinding noise when I <laughs> run things through and I'm like oh that's not good thankfully we have a new machine about to come out for demonstrators that comes out next month and for customers in September so that's exciting right. almost there I should have run this one through a little better but uh, here we go. So the very sad news for anyone who has um, heard about this is this week I should have been with my husband in Maui <laughs> and we're not there because everybody knows why. So that's a bit sad because um, we should have been doing that this week. I should have made a, I did make a couple of tropical cards this week. You might have seen me post them. stuff on the back of that one so normally these would come out better than this but like I said my big shots really not behaving as it should love you and then you want to put your sentence correct in the correct order because that would be really bad if I didn't do that so love you more than coffee I'm going to glue this together which won't take very long, I'll just use Tombow probably, I find that good for this sort of thing and I'm going to make that card up and um, you guys will be able to see that on my page very shortly when it's done so there we go, aren't these cute little coffee cups, they really do look like they could have been made by the Jetsons <laughs> I think that's a really cute little coffee card and um I have lots and lots of cool ideas of things that we can do with the coffee cards. So such, such cute stamps. I like the fact that you can make up different sentences. So, you know, um, I've got the one I did yesterday said today's plan, coffee. <laughs> but there's also, also the word consume is on that one. Consume coffee, I just got rid of the consume. Um, I like the ones that says uh, a day without, whatever it might be, coffee, cocktails, chocolate. Um, is and it says is like um just kidding i have no idea <laughs> or you're just like coffee or chocolate or whatever it is so there's some really really cute little sayings and you can make up some great things and some of them are good on the inside of a card too so it's a really fun set and it's got really cute things i like i haven't used it yet but i like the coffee see that the sorry the the cookie see how it cuts that out and you can color it in but yeah it's very cute little cookie and cute little cocktail that would have been good this week I should be making cocktail cards <laughs> to commiserate not being in Maui okay
So I'll go ahead and put this together and I hope that you guys uh, have enjoyed that. Um, I will be back with more for you soon and stay tuned. I am going to have a couple of things going up on my YouTube channel um, in the next week or so. Okay, in the next few days. See you soon people and I will be back. Bye.